Good morning. Welcome to this wonderful celebration of achievement. I am Noel Wilkin. It is my honor to serve our university as provost and executive vice chancellor for academic affairs. And it is my great pleasure to introduce and welcome interim chancellor Larry Sparks. Good morning. I always hate when we don't have the opportunity for our seniors to experience the Grove, but uh, Mother Nature had other ideas for us. Welcome to the University of Mississippi on the most beautiful campus in America and the best day of our academic year. The day we recognize the success of our students, families, faculty, and staff. Today is a day to be celebrated and remembered. It is a happy day for all of us. The first Ole Miss students graduated in 1851. However, I'm told the first commencement at the University of Mississippi took place in July 1849. At the end of the new university's first academic year, although with no graduates, and the institution conferred no degrees. In the words of university historian Dr. David Sansing, the four-day events surrounding the official program included sumptuous banquets, a commencement ball, and many speeches, and was a gala celebration. Well, there's no, this commencement this year will not involve a ball, but I am certain the number of people in attendance today is an order of magnitude much greater. Caitlin Richardson, Caitlin Ann Richardson, a master's student studying vocal performance will now lead us as we sing our national anthem. Please rise. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets echoed the bombs burst in air You may be seated. And thank you, Caitlin. We welcome the families and friends of today's graduates to campus, and we give thanks for this graduation day. Many of you have traveled great distances to see your sons, daughters, spouses, relatives, or friends receive their hard-earned diplomas. We know our graduates are grateful for your support and encouragement. Graduates, I know you're scattered all around this morning, but is our tradition to ask you to stand and to express your appreciation to those who have loved you, encouraged, and supported you during your years at Ole Miss. Please stand, graduates. Thank you. 
The men and women of our faculty commit their lives to teaching, research, and service. They have taught, challenged, nurtured, and inspired our graduates to help them prepare for their futures. They have also established friendships that will continue for life because that is the Ole Miss way. Will the faculty please stand and let us express our appreciation for all that you do. Members of the Board of Trustees of State Institutions of Higher Learning are appointed by the Governor, confirmed by the Senate, and serve nine-year terms. We are grateful for their unwavering dedication to higher education in Mississippi. Today, we are pleased to have Commissioner Al Rankins, Trustee Shane Hooper, and Trustee Jeannie Lucky to represent our Governing Board and join us on our platform party. Please join me in welcoming the IHO Board of Trustees. An essential component of our university is the Health Sciences Campus in Jackson. The University of Mississippi Medical Center houses six schools, including medicine, dentistry, nursing, health-related professions, the graduate school in the health sciences, and population health. Today, representing the Medical Center, please welcome Dr. Charles S. O'Mara, the Associate Vice Chancellor for Clinical Affairs and Professor of Surgi Surgery, Division of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery. <laughs> I'm now pleased to welcome Provost Wilkins back to the podium. Thank you, Chancellor Sparks. I am pleased to introduce the distinguished and dedicated platform party who lead the university and join us today to commend our graduates. As I introduce you, please stand and remain standing. I ask that the audience please hold your applause until all are introduced. Mr. Ross Bjork, Vice Chancellor for Intercollegiate Athletics. Dr. Brandy Hepner LeBanc, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and Associate Professor of Higher Education. Dr. Josh Gladden, Vice Chancellor for Research and Sponsor Programs and Professor of Physics and Astronomy. Dr. Katrina Caldwell, Vice Chancellor for Diversity and Community Engagement and Instructional Professor of Higher Education. Ms. Charlotte Parks, Vice Chancellor for Development. Ms. Erica McKinley, Chief Legal Officer and General Counsel. Mr. Perry Sansing, Associate General Counsel and Special Assistant to the Chancellor for Governmental Affairs. Dr. Donna Strum, Associate Provost, Professor of Pharmacy Administration, and Research Professor in the Research Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Dr. Rich Forget, Associate Provost and Professor of Political Science. Dr. Douglas Sullivan Gonzalez, Dean of the Sally McDonald Barksdale Honors College and Professor of History. Professor Cecilio Botero, Dean and Professor of University Libraries. Our student leaders joining us on the platform today are the presidents who serve during the current academic year, Mr. Elam Miller, Associate Student Body President, and Mr. Christopher Bright Ramos, Graduate Student Council President. Would you please express your appreciation to our distinguished platform party? The remainder of our platform party will be introduced as they come forward to play a role in this morning's ceremony. Last evening, the graduate faculty hooded their doctoral student graduates in a separate special ceremony. Will these students please stand to be recognized? Each year, as part of our Honors Convocation, the Elsie Hood Outstanding Teacher Award is presented to a member of our faculty. This year, Dr. John Young, Associate Professor of Psychology, was the recipient of this singular honor. Unfortunately, Dr. Young was not able to be with us today. Let's show our appreciation and congratulations for him.
this time, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Brandy Hebner LeBanc to the lectern to present the Frist Awards. For many of our faculty and staff members, helping students grow and discover their passions goes far beyond the walls of classrooms or laboratories. The Frist Student Service Award recognizes university employees who go above and beyond the call of duty to demonstrate their commitment to helping our students thrive during their time here with our university. Dr. Thomas Frist, an Ole Miss alumnus from Nashville and founder of Hospital Corporation of America, established an endowment for the award in 1995. It has become one of the most cherished honors we present annually. The cornerstone of Dr. Frist's success was his emphasis on service whether as a physician, a CEO, or a volunteer. The endowment provides a monetary award each year to a faculty member and a staff member who have been selected for their exceptional service to students. I am privileged to present these awards today to two individuals that I know personally and have deep respect for. They are consummate advocates for University of Mississippi students. Our staff recipient this year is Cindy May, Associate Director of Financial Aid. Cindy is approaching her 16th year as a member of the staff and has spent her entire time on campus in the Office of Financial Aid, where she has become a true model of student advocate and mentor. In fact, one of her colleagues noted that her level of dedication to helping students, quote, puts her in a class of her own. One of her primary responsibilities is scholarship administration. So Cindy gets to work with students across campus several times throughout their college careers. In fact, it's probably safe to say that she's worked with many of today's graduates multiple times over their years here at the campus. Quote, her nights and weekends are filled with Skype interviews for the prestigious FAMP scholarships and Ole Miss Women's Council scholarships throughout the month of March, one colleague wrote, noting that there are 65 of these scholarships to be awarded each year. Quote, by the end, she, only knows, she, she not only knows many of the names of the incoming freshman class by heart, she knows the student individually. She offers her personal cell number to admissions counselors so that when they're on the road recruiting students, they can get answers to families' questions about scholarships and other forms of financial aid at any moment. Quote, even though Cindy is a manager who can constantly juggles administrative duties, she advises many, many students and parents personally. The recommendation concluded. She's very hands-on with customer service, even offering to walk students to other offices to ensure that they get the help they need. Please join me in honoring Cindy May. This year, the faculty award goes to Michael Barnett, chair of the Department of Theater and Film and an associate professor of lighting design. Besides his administrative and teaching roles in the theater department, he has served as chair of the Faculty Senate for four years, was a fellow in the 2015-16 Southeastern Conference Academic Leadership Development Program, and has been a faculty research fellow here at the University of Mississippi. But Michael's primary concern has always been to make sure that his department provides the best experience possible for students. Quote, he is a great listener, one of his students wrote in his nomination for this award. Quote, he started a student advisory board and it has become a safe place to start conversations about the theater and film program and as a way to bridge the gap between the professors and their students. This student said he felt comfortable going to Michael with any kind of problem, both personal and professional, saying, quote, he has guided me with my transition into professional theater and into the next phase of my life every step of the way. And this is not the first year Michael has been nominated um, for a first award. In a previous year, another student wrote about the profound impact Michael has had on his life and career. Quote, even after I left his class, his doors were always open for me and he continued to challenge me, the student says. I really cannot express how grateful I am for his encouragement, kindness, and his ability to keep asking questions to get to the root of the why certain ideas were important or needed. 
I look back on my college career and being his student was far best, the best thing for me. Faculty and staff members who invest this much of their lives into our students are what make this university such an important place for many. Please join me in recognizing Michael Barnett. It is now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Josh Gladden to present the Distinguished Research and Creative Achievement Award. Good morning, and let me add my words of welcome and congratulations. It is a great honor and a privilege to announce the 2019 recipient of the University of Mississippi Distinguished Research and Creative Achievement Award. Before I announce the award, I'd like to thank this year's sponsor, the Abidi Foundation which was founded by Syed Abidi. Dr. Abidi is a distinguished alumnus of the University of Mississippi School of Pharmacy. He has been a steadfast supporter for our university, university's educational and research enterprises. We're very fortunate to receive the support and grateful to recognize our appreciation for the Abidi Foundation. The Distinguished Research and Creative Achievement Award recognizes and pays tribute to a faculty member whose career <coughs> and achievements have generated national and international accolades. Someone who has been a leader in their chosen field, who has inspired and encouraged others, who is admired and respected among their peers, and who has made an outstanding and lifelong contributions to their profession and to our institution. This year's award goes to Ron Rishlack, professor of law and holder of the Jamie L. Witten Chair in Law and Government. Professor Rislak is a nationally and internationally recognized scholar in an expansive range of legal subject areas. He has earned uh, decades of respect as an exceptional professor, all the while making enormous contributions to his field. These contributions in turn have brought recognition to the university and its academic excellence and served as a model for student scholars and has enriched the School of Law. Dr. Rishlak has, been, uh, has written prolific prolifically across an array of disciplines, including gaming law, sports law, evidence, legal practice, and law, religion, and history. He is author, co-author, or editor of 10 books and has published in leading law journals such as the Notre, da Notre Dame Law Review, the UCLA Law Review, Boston College Law Review, Environmental Law, the Stanford Environmental Law Journal, as well as the Washington Post. And he, uh, he has, his expertise has led to media ex, uh, appearances on 2020, the National Geographic Channel, PBS Radio, C-SPAN, and many other television and radio programs. Ron's range of service activities are as wide ranging as his field of expertise. He has served for 13 years as Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. He has chaired the Athletics Diversity Committee and the Athletics Compliance Committee for almost 10 years. He has served as permanent representative of the Holy See to the United Nations. He has also served on the Mississippi Advisory Board for the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. In 2017, he received the Ben Hardy Faculty Excellence Award from the law school. In a letter of nomination, a colleague noted Professor Rishlak's high regard among his students, writing, he is beloved by students. Indeed, several students noted he is very friendly and passionate teacher and was very enthusiastic about the material. Many others noted he welcomed questions, was extremely knowledgeable, shared engaging stories and anecdotes, and engaged with students in discussions during every class. In one nomination letter, a colleague described Ron as a generous teacher who devotes substantial time outside of classes to his students and one who serves a scholarly mentor to aspiring legal scholars. By encouraging students to publish seminar papers, reviewing their submissions for publication, and collaborating with them. Indeed, this colleague noted that Ron's commitment to excellence was evident in all aspects of his academic life from scholarship to teaching and writing. Please join me in congratulating Ron Rishlak, the recipient of the university's 2019 Distinguished Research and Creative Achievement Award.
Now I'd like to invite Mr. Zachary Ryan D. Gregorio, senior class president, who will give remarks. Uh, first off, may everybody please very briefly rise. Okay, now you may sit. Sorry, I've just always wanted to do that. Um, also, warning mom, I did put my phone on airplane mode, so while I'm giving the speech, it won't, people won't be calling me, so we're all good. Um, so I'm Zach D. Gregorio, I'm the graduating class of 2019 senior class president. Um, alongside me in office were Mikhail Love, um, who's somewhere in here, can't point to him, don't know where he is, uh, as the senior class vice president, and Katrina Curtis as the senior class treasurer slash secretary. Um, so basically, as the senior class officers, we're tasked with choosing the senior gift, as well as raising the funds for it. So most classes in the past have done benches on campus, light poles, clocks, um, which are great to be able to come back and see, um, but we wanted to do a gift that actually hopefully could save the life of a future Ole Miss student. Um, so we chose to raise money for the Counseling Center, the University Counseling Center. Um, it's a free resource for students to go get therapy. Yeah. Um, so it's a free resource for students to go get group therapy, single therapy, couples therapy. Um, I actually began going to the counseling center this semester, um, and I wish that I would have started sooner. Um, a huge part of our goal with all this, as opposed to having a financial goal, we wanted to have a donor goal. Um, so we were able to raise $6,700 with a total of 250 donors for the counseling center. Um, and that wouldn't have been possible without the help from, um, from my fellow uh, class officers, uh, as well as the development office on campus, which helped us out a ton. Um, now kind of our role in all of this is to end the stigma uh, involved with therapy. Um, there's a stigma of weak, oh, whoops. Uh, there's a stigma of weakness um, that you can't do it alone. Um, I can speak on behalf of myself that going to therapy has helped me immensely, um, just having someone there uh, it, it's helped a lot, and I'm glad that we were able to raise money for them. Um, and potentially, you could end up helping us save the life of a future Ole Miss student. Um, today, the Ignite page, which is like the uh, development page for fundraising, is still up. So you can go to ignite.olemiss.edu and come find the page and help us out. Um, also, just one last note, I am graduating without a job. So if anybody really liked what I said up here, just find me on LinkedIn. Thank you. We will accept resumes in the chancellor's office. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zach. We are honored to welcome Major General Augustus Leon Collins as our commencement speaker today. General Collins' presence here today is particularly special, not only because he is such an accomplished individual, but because he is a distinguished alumnus of the University of Mississippi. He has been in your place, which makes his experience, insight, and wisdom that he will share with you all the more pertinent. Before retiring from service in 2016, General Collins enjoyed a long and distinguished military career. He enlisted in the Mississippi Army National Guard in 1977. He was commissioned in 1980 upon completion of State Officer Candidate School. He has served in various command and staff positions in units at every level. General Collins served on active duty in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm in 1990 and 91. He also commanded the 155th Armored Brigade Combat Team during combat operations in Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2004 through 2006. In 2005, while serving in Iraq, General Collins was promoted to Brigadier General, becoming the first African American to attain the rank of General in the history of the Mississippi National Guard. In 2012, General Collins was appointed Adjutant General of Mississippi by Governor Phil Bryant. As the commanding general of the Mississippi Army and Air National Guards,
Collins led and maintained a ready force of more than 12,000 citizen soldiers and airmen. In concert with the governor and legislature, he oversaw the Mississippi Military Department and the development and coordination of all policies, plans, and programs of the Mississippi National Guard. General Collins is the recipient of numerous military awards and decorations. A few of these include the Notorious Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, the Military Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, the Mississippi Magnolia Cross, and the Order of St. George Medallion for Excellence in Armor and the Combat Action Badge. He is a widely recognized leader in our state as a 2006 Mississippi Trailblazer of the Year, induction into the Mississippi Military Academy Officer Candidate School Hall of Fame, the National Guard's Bureau Minuteman Award twice, and Distinguished Citizen Award by Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. A native of Boonville, General Collins earned his Bachelor of Business Administration from the University of Mississippi in 1982. In addition, he earned an MBA from Jackson State University in 1993 and a Master of Strategic Studies in 2000 from the U.S. Army War College. He also completed a Joint Senior Reserve Component Officers Course at the War College in 2015. General Collins has remained a devoted and active member of the Ole Miss family in the, all the decades since his graduation. He is a 2007 inductee into the University's Alumni Hall of Fame, and he's the current president of the Ole Miss Alumni Association. General Collins is now CEO of MINAC, a Jackson-based job development and career training corporation. He is a member of New Hope Baptist Church in Jackson, where he serves on the deacon board. He is married to the former Deborah Fitzgerald. They have two sons, William and Benjamin. General Collins, we're grateful to have you here for this momentous occasion. And we're all eager to hear what you have to share with the class of 2019 and your greetings on behalf of the Ole Miss Alumni Association. General Collins. Well, good morning, Ole Miss. Thank you, Chancellor Sparks, for that introduction to, to Chancellor Sparks, to the Board of Trustees, to the faculty and staff here at the University of Mississippi, to the family members who are here in attendance, to the friends of Ole Miss, hotty toddy and good morning. To the Ole Miss class of 2019, congratulations. Today, you culminate a journey that has been full of hard work, determination, self-discipline, but today it ends with reward. You know, this ceremony was supposed to take place out in the grove, but Mother Nature had other plans. But as I stand here and I look across the pavilion, you know, it doesn't make any difference whether it's held in the grove, whether it's held at Tad Smith like it was when I graduated, or whether it's held here in the pavilion, there's no more breathtaking sight than graduation day at Ole Miss. You know, when, when Chester Sparks, you can, you can clap for that. <laughs> you know, when Chester Sparks uh, asked me to deliver the address today, uh, I was taken aback. I was actually on my way to Ole Miss at the time. I was driving up I-55. I was headed up here for the Alumni Association meeting. And uh, my phone rang, and I answered it. And uh, he said something to the effect that, uh, I know you're the president of the Alumni Association, and traditionally the president has an opportunity to say a few words at graduation. But this year, we want to extend to you the opportunity to deliver the commencement address. Now, I couldn't really believe what I was hearing. But now, I tried to play it cool. I said, uh, yes, Chester, I can do that. That won't be a problem. I'd be happy to do that for you. 
But now those of you sitting out there in caps and gowns and those of you who are alumni of this university, you know what was going on in the back of my head. What I was really was saying was, hell yeah, damn right I'll do it. Now, customarily, the university gets someone who is world-renowned to deliver this address. I researched it, and I know that senators, congressmen, sitting governors, authors, world-renowned reporters, Rhodes Scholars have stood in the position that I stand here today, and that's not lost upon me. Unfortunately, I'm not any of those things. I'm just an old country boy from Boonville, Mississippi. But I tell you what else I am. I am an Ole Miss Rebel. That's right. I'm all in. And for those of you who are graduating today, I hope that you're all in also. You know, this university belongs to you now. And as you leave this beautiful place, this place we call Ole Miss, the place that you have called home for the last several years, just remember that you'll leave a part of yourself here but also you'll take a part of Ole Miss with you because wherever you go, you'll be forever linked to this university. So I encourage you to continue your relationship with the university by becoming a member of the Ole Miss Alumni Association. It's the best way I know to stay connected to the university that you love. Become a member, join your local chapter, put the decal in your window, buy the car tag. It all serves as ways of telling people that you're proud of your university but it also serves to remind you of the good times that you spent while you were here at Ole Miss. I think Winnie the Pooh said it best. If there ever comes a day when we can't be together, keep me in your heart. I'll stay there forever. Keep Ole Miss in your heart, and you'll have a smile on your face each and every day. As I searched for words to say today, I settled on things that I suggest that you might want to be. Now, not what I think you might want to be professionally, but things that could define you as a person. And those things I suggest that you be is, be proud, be bold, be open-minded, be determined, and be wise. Now, the announcement that I would be the commencement address speaker today went out back in March. And since that time, I've done a lot of traveling in and out of the state uh, with my job and also with Ross Bjork and the coaches on the Rebel Road Trip in 2019. And as I traveled around, invariably, people would come up to me and they'd ask me two questions. They'd say, aren't you General Collins? To which I'd say, well, yes, I am. And then they'd ask me a second question. They'd say, aren't you going to give the commencement address at Ole Miss this year? And again, I say, well, yes, I am. Now, the obvious thing to me was that the people asking the question already knew the answer. It wasn't important that they make a connection to me or ask me if I was going to be speaking today. What was important was what they would say next. Then they would tell me, my son is graduating that day, or my daughter or my grandson, or my granddaughter, or my niece, or my nephew is a part of that graduating class. Now, why was that important? It's important because they're proud of you. They're extremely proud of you. And I can tell you, when I was standing there and talking to them, I could see it in their face. And if you're sitting next to them right now, you can turn, and I can guarantee you that they are just absolutely beaming with joy and pride. Now, that brings me to my first B. They're proud, but I also want you to be proud. Be proud of your accomplishment. You know, you come to this university, you started something that was pretty significant, I might add, but you had the wherewithal to see it through and finish it. Now, those parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles out there, they've made a great investment in you and it's time for you to give them a return on their investment. You need to continue to make them proud. Don't do anything that's going to stop them from being proud. 
But again, I tell you, you should also be proud of what you have accomplished. Now, my second B is to be bold. You know, everyone needs something in life that they believe in. And outside of your religious belief, which I think is extremely important, by the way, let me suggest one other thing that you need to believe in. I suggest that you believe in yourself. That's right. There's going to be plenty of people who will discourage you, people who will tell you that you can't accomplish certain things, you know, people who will doubt you. You don't need to be one of those people. But to be bold and to believe in yourself takes some work on your part. You've got to prepare yourself. You've got to do your homework. You've got to do research. So when it comes your turn to step up, you can stand, you can speak with confidence, courage, and conviction. Now, I had the honor to deliver a commencement address a couple years ago to a, a small college. It was much smaller setting than what we have here today. Uh, it was held in their auditorium. Uh, their graduates marched in and took their places. And it was a beautiful uh, graduation, by the way. And it was uh, divided just as we are here today in two sections with a large aisle that goes down the middle. Now, we're right in the middle of the ceremony. And all of a sudden, a young man sitting about midway over on this section stands up. And he starts excusing himself, and he makes his way across his fellow graduates until he gets out into the center aisle. Then he turns and starts walking towards the front of the auditorium. Of course, you know, everybody in the auditorium is saying to themselves, what is this boy doing? But he makes it all the way down to the front, and he does a right-hand turn and goes all the way to the outside aisle until he gets about midway of the auditorium, and there's a young lady sitting over there. He stops right in front of her. He pulls up his gown, reaches in his pocket, and pulls something out. And then he drops to one knee. He's got a ring box. He pops the question right there in the middle of the graduation ceremony. <laughs> That's right, he proposed holy matrimony right there in front of a capacity crowd in that auditorium. Now, all the folks in the auditorium was going, ooh and ah. That is everybody except me. <laughs> you see, I'm the kind of person I like to think things through. I like to analyze them. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, Man, I sure hope she says yes. <laughs> because if she doesn't, this is going to go bad in a hurry. <laughs> but now, luckily, she said yes. Now, I tell you, that young man was bold. That young man believed in himself. He saw an opportunity, and he took advantage of it. So it's obvious to me, though, that he'd done his homework. You know, he had done all the probability, and he figured out that there was a greater probability that he would get a yes as opposed to getting a no. So now, before we go any further in today's ceremony, do we have anybody who would like to get up? Now, I got to tell you, that's about, that's about 15,000 people in here today. You had better be certain you're going to get a yes. Any takers? All right, maybe a little bit later on. Now, the next thing I want you to be is be open-minded. It's important to understand in life just exactly what is important. To the graduates, when you wake up tomorrow morning and you go look in the bathroom mirror, the person looking back at you is going to be a little different. Now, I know some of you are receiving graduate and terminal degrees today, but the proponents of you are receiving, or when you look in the mirror tomorrow, you're going to be looking at a person who is a first time college graduate. Tomorrow will be a little different. And that will mean something very different tomorrow than it did yesterday. Expectations for that person in the mirror will be different. You'll be held to a higher standard. Your family members, your friends, the people in your community will hold you to a higher standard. Even I will hold you to a higher standard. Tomorrow, something very different will happen to you, and it's called life. Now, your life is going to be different from the other graduates in this class, even though you may re be receiving the same identical degree. But it'll be your life, and it'll be up to you to make the best of it. Now, Kermit the Frog once said, 
Life is like a movie. You get to write your own ending. I suggest you begin your movie with the end in mind. Set goals. Set lofty goals. Don't shortchange yourself. If you plan properly and you expect to succeed, you might just very well surprise yourself. But one thing to remember, it will be your attitude and it will be the amount of effort that you give to something that will determine how your movie ends. At times there will be things that you feel passionate about. There will be times when you feel you need to say or do something. There will be times when you feel that you're the only one in the crowd who's right. And occasionally you will be. But before you fall on your sword, I want you to make sure that the wound is going to be worth the results. Always understand that there are sometimes things in life that are bigger than you. Now, it was mentioned in my bio that I commanded a brigade combat team in Iraq in 2005. I commanded a force of almost 5,000 soldiers. We were responsible for combat operations in four of the 18 provinces in the country of Iraq. We were there at a bad time, and we were there at a bad place. My brigade headquarters were located in a place that was commonly called the Triangle of Death. On this one particular day, we had an incident with an improvised explosive device where we lost two soldiers. Now, there's nothing worse than losing soldiers when you're in combat. But this happened at one of my forward operating bases that was my far northwestern FOB a place called Fob Dogwood. So I had my, my convoy assembled and we went to Fob Dogwood because I wanted to spend a couple days on the ground with those soldiers as they went through their grief. As I was talking to a young captain one night, we were sitting out in the middle of the desert. It was pitch black dark. Uh, there are no street lights in the desert, by the way. And he was having a hard time dealing with the situation, the loss of his friends. But he made a statement to me that I remember to this day he says, you know, sir, it's times like this that make you understand what's really important. And then he says, you know, when I, he says, if, if I get back to the States and I go into a restaurant and I order a salad and I ask for blue cheese dressing and they bring me Thousand Islands, I think I'm just going to eat it. It's important to understand what is important in life. You can fall on your sword multiple times and all you'll end up with is a lot of wounds. Figure out what is important. I also encourage you to be determined. Be determined. In 1988, and I know that was before most of you were born, you graduates, but stay with me on this one. MGM Studios produced a movie. It was titled Bull Durham. Now, it was a movie about a minor league baseball team. Starred Kevin Costner, Susan Sarandon, Tim Robbins. And Kevin Costner was the, the star of the movie. He played a part by the name of Crash Davis. Now, Crash Davis had played in the minor leagues for 12 years, every year hoping he'd get called up to go to the majors. Now, Tim Robbins was a young pitcher with a, with a, with a dynamite arm and, and a really good fastball. Well, Robbins did get his call to go up to the majors. And he came to tell his friend Crash about it. And he told him, he says, Crash, I got my call. I'm going to, be, I'm going to go to the show, is what he was, he was calling it. And Crash says, says, do you know the difference between batting 250 and batting 300? Now, Robbins was all confused because he didn't understand why that was part of the conversation at the time. And Crash goes on to tell him, he says, well, the difference between batting 250 and 300 is one extra base hit per week. Now, he'd done the homework. He figured out how many weeks there were in a season. He figured out how many times you go to bat during a regular season and figured out if you had just one extra base hit, not a home run, not a triple, just one extra base hit per week, it would move your batting average from 250 to 300. And he said, that's the difference and playing in the minor leagues and being called up to the majors and then having the opportunity to play in Yankee Stadium. Now, I don't expect 4,000 graduates to go out and try out for a major league ball club tomorrow.
So whatever your profession is, there's going to be something in your profession that's equivalent to one extra base hit per week. You've got to find out what that is. Your one extra base hit might be an extra hour that you spend at the office on a Tuesday evening getting ready for a board meeting that happens on Wednesday morning. Your extra base hit might be reviewing that proposal and finding that one error that means the difference between your company getting that contract or not getting that contract. Your extra base hit might be that one extra phone call you make to a prospective customer expecting to get a no, but instead you get a yes. Whatever your extra base hit is, I want you to find it. And every day I want you to get out of bed, I want you to step up to the plate, and I want you to start swinging. Because you can't hit the ball if you don't swing, which means you can't get that extra base hit if you don't put forth the requ requisite effort. And that one extra base hit might be the difference between being good and being great. Next, I want you to be wise. Now, most of you have lived your entire life in what I call the digital age. Cell phones and other digital devices have been a thing of convenience for you for your entire life. In today's world, it's easy to email, to text, to tweet, to FaceTime. I could go on and on. You live in a time where time is valuable. And I know you believe that your time counts. Albert Einstein once said, not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. Now I'll leave that one there because that's one that you're going to have to figure out on your own. You've got to figure out what counts. Now there's a story about George Washington. Before he was the President of the United States, he was the Commanding General of the Continental Army. The story is that General Washington had his staff together one day when all of a sudden one of his aides came into the room. The aide went over to General Washington and leaned down and whispered something in his ear. General Washington immediately stood up and he gave one command, and that command was, saddle up Nelson. Now Nelson was General Washington's horse. Now we don't know what the aide told General Washington that day, but what we do know is General Washington thought that it was so important that he didn't write out a note and send it back, or he didn't whisper anything to the aide's ear and tell him to go tell this. He thought that it was so important that he needed to get up and go and handle it himself, and he had to do it in person. So there's going to be times when you're going to have to do the same thing. When you move forward in this world that you live in that's full of virtual reality, blockchain, artificial intelligence, the internet of things, robots, there's going to be times when you're going to have to get up and you're going to have to go and handle things yourself and you're going to have to do it in person. Because there's going to be days when you're going to have to saddle up your own Nelson. Because there's certain things where nothing beats a warm smile and a firm handshake. Now the last thing that I ask you to be is be benevolent. You all have so much to offer. Don't be afraid to give up your time, your talent, and your treasure. But you see, success will not be measured by the number of zeros you have at the end of your bank account. Success will be measured by the number of friends who come to your rescue in times of need. To the graduating class, again, I say congratulations. Now, momentarily, someone's going to step to this podium, and they're going to declare to the chancellor and to the world that you have met or exceeded the requirements necessary to be awarded a degree in the field of your study. That is a big deal. You should treat it as such. Mississippi has a number of fine colleges and universities. And if you're looking for a quality education, you can go to any one of them, and you can get that. But ladies and gentlemen, there's only one flagship university, and we're it. So I leave you today with the words from my 
favorite author, my favorite doctor, Dr. Seuss. Seuss says, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head and you have feet in your shoes. And you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the one who will decide where you go. Ole Miss graduating class of 2019, where will you go? The world is waiting. And I have one question. Are you ready? <laughs> General Collins, thank you so much for sharing your perspectives and for your words of encouragement and inspiration. We will now confer degrees on all candidates for graduation. All candidates will be presented their diplomas and in individual school ceremonies later this morning and this afternoon. Before we proceed, I'd like to note that today's ceremony includes many scholars who have taken varied paths from undergraduate to graduate students. But a group among you attended the fall convocation four years ago when you were given a coin. At that time it was given, it to, you, given to you, it symbolized the beginning of your academic journey at the university. We hope it's been a time of excitement, enlightenment, and challenge. At that convocation in the fall of 2015, you were asked to be mindful of the moment you shared the, with students sitting around you, hearing the same message that you all embarked on this path together. And now, Four years later, many of you have completed the bookends of this academic journey. We hope that you will treasure this coin and everything it symbolizes. May it serve as a special reminder of your time here at the University of Mississippi. We thank you for being part of this family. We would now like to recognize the candidates for degrees by school or college. I will introduce each dean who will then come forward and present the graduates of the school or college. At this time, I recognize Dr. D, Dr. Lee Cohen, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Professor of Psychology. Dr. Cohen, please come forward. Provost Wilkin, I'm pleased to present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Liberal Arts. Candidates, would you please stand? Please remain standing. Professor Ronald Rischlack, Professor of Law and Jamie L. Witten, Chair of Law and Government. Provost Wilkin, it is my honor to present the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctorate. Will those candidates please rise and remain standing? Dr. Dave Paleo, Dean of the School of Engineering and Professor of Biomedical Engineering. Provost Wilkin, it is my distinct pleasure to present candidates for degrees in the School of Engineering. Will the candidates please rise and remain standing. Dr. David Rock, Dean of the School of Education and Professor of Curriculum and Instruction. Provost Wilkin, I am pleased to present the candidate for degrees in the School of Education. Will the candidates please stand and remain standing? <clears throat> Dr. David Allen, Dean of the School of Pharmacy and Professor of Pharmacology. Provost Wilkin, I am honored to present the candidates for the degrees in the School of Pharmacy, including those candidates for the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. Will the candidates please rise and remain standing? Yeah. 
Dr. Ken Sairi, Dean of the School of Business Administration and Professor of Finance. Provost Wilkin, it is my pleasure to present the candidates for degrees in the School of Business Administration. Will the candidates please stand and remain standing? The Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Arts, Specialist, and Master's degrees are awarded by the Graduate School. At this time, I'll ask Dr. Annette Cluck, Dean of the Graduate School and Professor of Leadership and Counselor Education, to come forward. Provost Wilkin, it is my distinct pleasure to present to you all graduate students earning degrees today from the Graduate School. Will those candidates please rise and remain standing? Dr. Mark Wilder, Dean of the Patterson School of Accountancy and KPMG Chair of Accountancy. Provost Wilkin, I am pleased to present the candidates for degrees from the Patterson School of Accountancy. Will the candidates please stand and remain standing? Dr. Pete Grangeen, Dean of the School of Applied Sciences and Professor of Health, Exercise Science, and Recreation Management. Provost Wilkin, I am delighted to present candidates for degrees in the School of Applied Sciences. Will candidates stand and remain standing? Dr. Will Norton, Dean of the School of Journalism and New Media and Professor of Journalism and New Media. Provost Wilkin, it's my privilege to present to you candidates for the degrees in the School of Journalism and New Media. Will the candidates please stand and remain standing? Dr. Tony Amateur, Associate Provost, Director of Outreach and Continuing Studies, Dean of General Studies, and Associate Professor of Management and Management Information Systems. Provost Wilkin, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Bachelor of General Studies and the Bachelor of University Studies degree programs. Will the candidates please stand and remain standing? Chancellor Sparks, I have the honor to present these candidates who have been recommended by their respective deans and approved by the university faculty for various university degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of State Institutions of Higher Learning, the university faculty recommendations I now confer upon each of you the degree to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, immunities, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. You may be seated. Across, these, across the world, these ceremonies are referred to as graduation or commencement. Today, you complete your work as students at the university. You graduate. You also begin the next chapter of your lives. You commence. Our collective prayer for each of you is a life filled with joy, good health, successful, meaning, meaningful careers, and peace. Bless each and every one of you. Details of the afternoon ceremonies, which are all fo 
all following the inclement weather plan are available online. Also, we ask you to keep a copy of the program for the afternoon ceremonies. Graduation exercises for the University of Mississippi Medical Center will be held at 10 a.m. on Friday, May 24th in the Mississippi Coliseum. Today, for your convenience, several dining options across campus will be open this afternoon. Mr. Benjamin Scott Larson, Mr. Robert Owen Brown will lead us in singing the alma mater. The words are printed in the back of your program. One final word, in keeping with the setting of today's ceremony, there will be no formal recessional. Benjamin and Robert, please come forward to lead us. South in Mississippi, there's a spot that ever calls where among the hills and fold stand old Alma Mater's halls where the tree Thank you. We are dismissed.